Hi, Nathan with Complete Water Solutions, and today we're going to be talking about how to remove this end cap out of the RO housing here. Uh, please note that you should follow your local lockout tagout procedures as well as be wearing your proper PPE while doing this. So without further ado, let's dive into it. All right, so we're, as stated earlier, we're talking about how to take this end cap out of this RO housing here. Uh, please note that your end cap may or may not have a thrust collar on it. Some of them are welded in, some of them are just plastic removable pieces like this. But a thrust collar is essentially a collar that is helping support the RO membrane on the pressure side, so the high pressure side. And the high pressure side is actually gonna be, or the, the fourth side is actually gonna be on the back end of this housing here, because the water is coming in here and is going this way. So because of that, the, all the pressure is gonna be down at the back end, so it's here to support the uh, RO membrane up against this thrust collar. Without it, all the pressure would be on what we call our end adapter, or permeate port adapter. And because of that, it may crack without the thrust collar. So now we've got the thrust collar in place. So let's cover the tools that you may need in order to complete this job here. A couple things that you may need are a pair of channel locks or pliers in order to pull the snap ring out as we'll state in this video here. You also may need uh, some a pair of what we call end cap removal tools. Uh, these tools can be come in various different manufacturers or sizes and with that uh, these tools will be used to help pull the end cap off. Uh, we're also going to be using a Phillips screwdriver that's to get the snap ring uh, placeholders uh, to take those out and we'll be covering that. You also may need a pair of uh, channel locks or as we talked about earlier some pliers to remove the snap ring in order to pull back on the snap ring and pull those out. So without further ado let's go through the first step. All right, the first step, we are going to use this Phillips screwdriver and we're gonna go ahead and remove our two snap ring placeholders here. Now some RO housings may not have these in place or they may look different. Uh, some of them will use Allen wrenches, usually an M8 or an M16, I believe. Uh, it usually they're varying different sizes, but anyways, this is just to hold the snap ring in place. Uh, technically speaking, it's not there for uh, anything else other than that, so someone doesn't come by and uh, accidentally remove the snap ring while the unit's under pressure, but once the snap ring's in place, it's not gonna really, uh, especially when the system's operating, it's not gonna move or go anywhere. So we'll go ahead and we'll get those removed. So next, we're gonna to wanna to remove the snap ring that's holding the end cap in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and try with a pair of small channel locks here. And they do make some snap ring removal tools uh, that do make on the internet. Uh, you can find something to maybe hook that, like a, a, a hook uh, piece, or like as you can see, I just used a pair of channel locks. I pulled down on the snap ring and the snap ring started to come out. Go ahead and remove that the rest of the way. All right, now that with the snap ring out, let's move on to the next step. Now, some people will use channel locks and try to pry back to get the end cap off. I say that is not really a good way of doing it. Uh, you can actually cause damage, you can snap pieces or what have you. You can use these T-handles. There will be a link in the description below in the video for these T-handles. You can order them from us or uh, from your RO housing manufacturer. Um, and they come in different sizes and variations. Uh, this one just threads in here. And don't worry, this may move depending on the, the RO housing or end cap that you have. But you go ahead and put the T-handles in and you can go ahead and pull on the T-handles and actually it'll pull out the whole end cap as so. So you can see that the end cap was pulled out. You can then remove your T-handles like so. And there we go, there we have it. There is the housing with no T-handles in it. So now that we've got your end cap off, let's talk about the next thing in this, which will be your O-rings and your end adapter. So here you have your RO end cap housing and you'll have your end adapter here. And as you can see, this one is coming out pretty simply because it's been lubricated and well uh, done, but there's an O-ring on the inside of this end cap and here is the adapter. Now, 
The adapter is usually sized based on the membrane that you have. Some membrane manufacturers are one and a half inches, some of them are 1.125 inches. So this adapter here is uh, for a standard RO 8 inch membrane with a 1.125 end adapter and so that slides into here. Now some RO housings may have multiple membranes in them. So you'll see that some RO housings may have three, four, five, six, seven, I've even seen some, I think up to seven or eight uh, RO membranes in one housing. And with that, especially on the feed side, this end adapter, depending on the membrane manufacturer, may need to come in or slide out depending on where we need to be at and to make connection with the RO membrane. So there's a thing or process that we call shimming and you may need to shim your RO membranes. And because the RO membrane may be sitting yay far out, well, with water pressure, this may slide back or may slide forward. And so you may have to shim your end adapter. And in order to do that, you can simply pull out your end adapter and you can get different size shims uh, essentially here. And you can slide it on to your permeate port or your end adapter and you can shim it to the size that you need it, right? So if you only need to be X amount out, you can place one shim on, and if you need more, you can place on more shims. Uh, so that's how you would shim your end adapter to make sure it has a nice snug fit against your RO membrane inside your housing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this end cap put back in. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put in the RO end cap. We're gonna reinstall it. Note that this is a good time that you should replace your O-rings. These O-rings on the end adapter here that go inside your RO membrane, these will actually come, uh, usually there's some extra ones with your RO membrane. The one that's on your permeate port that we talked about earlier inside of here, that you may need to order or have some on, on standby or on in, as spares. And here, this O-ring uh, will also need to be ordered as well. It will not come with your RO membrane. So that's something that you may want to have spares or extras on. This RO end cap O-ring can come in usually like two variations. One is just your standard circular O-ring, and the other one would be what we call a quad seal. Uh, this is a circular, but it has four sides to it, so it's not rounded. Uh, and it's basically some RO membrane housing manufacturers use a quad seal, some use a standard circular O-ring. So just note that. Uh, you can lube up this O-ring as well as these O-rings uh, to help uh, be able to reinstall the system or make it easier. Uh, Dow Corning 111 is a good grease to utilize or uh, what we usually use in the field is a glycerin, a vegetable grade glycerin uh, that will rinse off and wash off and won't cause any contamination issues. So that is another good viable option that we use here at Complete Water Solutions. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this reinstalled. We're going to go ahead and push the end cap back in as far as we can. And you may find that, you know, the end cap doesn't go in this easy, all right? So if it's not going in easy, you may have one or two things that are going on. One is you may have the membrane that's pushing up against the end cap and the membrane's not seated as far in as it needs to be. Uh, maybe you've got it shimmed too far out, okay? That could be another reason. So you may need to go back in and remove your shim that you'd installed earlier. Or you may also find out that it's just, you know, without, with, you know, maybe it's just a little gunked up or whatever. So you may have to use some force. Another thing that we use out in, the, out in the job site a lot is a rubber mallet or a dead blow and either a piece of wood or a two by four or whatever, and just slightly tap the end cap until it is in its proper place. Usually what you want to do is tap it until you can see the slot where your snap ring would go. You do not want to go any further than that. If you can go extremely further than that, then you may need to pull your end cap back out and add some more shims because you shouldn't be able to push your RO end cap really, really far in. That means you need to shim out your end adapter to be so it's snug up against the uh, uh, RO membrane. So here we are, we've got some space here now for us to go ahead and reinstall our snap ring. Looks like I got a little piece of junk in here. There we go. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that uh, snap ring reinstalled. So 
So you'll see the snap ring can kind of bend out and fold out here. And go ahead and take the piece that's going to get reinstalled and put that started up in that, that little spot there. I'm going to go ahead and push them in. And you'll see the snap ring can kind of go in there. Now, some snap rings will not go in that easy, folks. And so what you'll end up having to do sometimes, and I've done this out in the job site uh, quite a few, is you'll end up taking a flathead screwdriver and kind of working your snap ring around until it fits into its spot. And so sometimes you'll have to do that. You'll just have to tap on it to get that snap ring to fit in that groove really well. But just want to let you guys know there you may or may not have to do that so just want to give you a heads up on that it may not go in this easy again this is a new ro housing so it's not uh it's not going to have as much uh stuff in the way and it's not going to be uh, necessarily as tight so all right we're going to go ahead now that we got the o-ring snap back in we're going to go ahead and put our o-ring holders back into place or our snap ring holder sorry i shouldn't say the o-ring back in but the snap ring back in let's go ahead and uh, Phillips and again you may find that your RO membrane housing is missing these usually most RO membrane housing manufacturers will have these in spot I know you know in the past where um, folks may have not put these back in after they replaced membranes so it's it's a good practice to get into I would not recommend using a impact wrench or an automatic wrench to install these or remove these because um, you could strip out the screws and a lot of times it's what ends up happening and so folks will not uh, reinstall these back in because of that and again the likeliness of the snap ring moving or coming out during operation very slim to none but it is always a good practice to put these back in the manufacturers put them there for a reason and so we just kind of believe that putting them back in the way that we took them out is the best practice to use so there you have it we have installed we have removed and we have reinstalled the RO end cap successfully. Hey folks, this, that concludes our video of removing and reinstalling our end cap. Hey, if you found this video helpful, would you do me a favor? Hit the like button or subscribe. We're always releasing new content on how to in the water industry. And as always, thank you guys. Have yourself a great day. Oh, one last thing. If you need help with parts and consumables for your RO system or maybe some O-rings or tools, don't forget to contact us. There's a link in the description below to get in touch with one of our industrial technical sales team members and they will be able to help you out. Have yourself an awesome day. We'll talk to you soon.